Hey guys, it's me Chris here and today we'll be doing my review of the Canon EF 50mm 1.8. Okay, so the Canon EF 50mm 1.8 is an affordable lens that offers a aperture of 1.8 and also it does have a um, overall really good picture quality. Okay, so the Canon EF 50mm 1.8 is a prime lens. Now what this means is it has a desired fixed focal length so you can't zoom in or zoom out when you're taking videos or photos or any sort of photo work uh, when you're using that particular lens. Now that kind of does limit you to what you're capable of, um, depending on what you're shooting. I mean, if you're a videographer or a photographer, um, if you're shooting portraits, this might um, be the perfect lens for you to start off with anyway. Um, but if you're shooting landscapes or something like that, this might not be the right choice. Okay, so the lens features 46 degrees and it's angle view, meaning that it's great for portraits and things that have a very narrow um, angle view but if you need something that's uh, got a larger angle view for instance like I said earlier uh, landscapes which are more of a broader angle um, so you need something as low as maybe 18 millimeters and like this is here 50 millimeters um, and in fact right now as I've got it on the Canon EOS 700D um, as it's a half crop sensor um, as it's not something like a 5D a 1D um, it does mean it actually increases the uh, focal range to around um, 80 millimeters. So in fact, it makes it basically zoom in even more. So like I said, if you need it for landscapes or something like that, this really might not be the perfect lens for you. But even so, it's still a great lens, like I said, for portraits or anything that really needs a narrow uh, review. I'm actually recording it right now. Um, on my camera so you can see everything um, isn't completely squashed everything does look really nice in fact something that made me pick this lens um, is because I've got the 1.8 aperture so in the background um, it's nice and blurry and I've got a nice bokeh so yeah overall it makes you have a really nice crisp um, clear uh, experience and I really do recommend this lens now as far as macro goes um, bringing the camera as close as you can to an object. This um, offers 45 centimeters at the, uh, basically the closest you can get um, before it basically won't focus. So you've got 45 centimeters, which is around that big, probably completely, wrong. yeah, I'm not gonna go there. Yeah, around 45 centimeters. Um, so, you know, you have to go and test out the lens for yourself really, or if you know what kind of photography or video work you're gonna be doing, um, if it's beyond 45 centimeters, you're perfectly fine taking video work. There's no limit to it. Um, and yeah, so you just need to understand that this probably might not be the best macro lens, but for portraits and things like that from a little bit, like a meter away, something like that, um, it is really perfectly fine. Okay, so if you wanna put a UV filter on this lens, um, the desired filter size is 52 millimeters. So if you want to protect the lens and put a UV filter on, that's perfectly fine. Um, it's the same as if you wanted a UV filter for changing the effects or something like that during video work or even photo work. You know, there's a desired lens uh, filters out there that um, can increase like the yellow in your photos or certain colors, um, you know, to make an, a desired effect on the um, picture or video itself. Okay, so the optics themselves feature a super spectra coating so you don't get that ghasting um, across the lens which is really nice and does give you a, a overall um, better picture quality or video quality whatever you're using it for um, so yeah that's a nice feature for them to include on this lens and overall should make the quality um, a fair bit better okay so the next thing I want to cover on the lens itself is the focus now this is probably not the best thing on the lens to be honest so I want to get the worst things away so I can carry on with some of the good and positive things on the lens so yeah the focus isn't great and to be honest with you the autofocus that does come within this lens isn't too good it doesn't support STM which is um, stepping motor um, inside of the lens so it's not a new technology it's quite old in fact and yeah, if you're gonna be doing video work like I am right now, if you've got a lapel microphone, it might not be too bad, it might still pick it up, but it's very loud indeed, especially when you're um, got it on film mode, movie mode, and it's trying to autofocus, it really is very frustrating. So right now, when I do all my videos, I have it 
um, on manual focus, especially for something like this, that's perfectly fine. Manual focus is more um, than enough. In fact, I, even if I had a grey lens, I'd probably still have it on manual focus because in the end, manual focus is always going to be better because it's you um, desiring what kind of focal length you want. So yeah, that's probably the way I would go. Okay, so now I'm going to cover build quality. Now, as it's a lens, you always want to feel that nice um, titanium feel or whatever it's going to be, um, and it's not that high quality. With uh, only being actually 80 pounds, you aren't going to get the highest quality out there. I mean, they also make the 1.4 of this lens and the 1.2. Now, the 1.4 I think uh, retails around 300 pounds, and the 1.2 is I don't know, it's just crazy money. <coughs> And this, in fact, is around £80, and I picked it up on eBay secondhand um, or refurbished, like never been used or something like that, uh, for around £62 free delivery. And yeah, it's perfectly fine. The build quality is okay. Like everything stays intact. I haven't had anything falling off. Um, and the only thing is the focus ring. Like for myself, when I'm doing video work and movie work, um, it's not too smooth, you know. It's okay, you can still focus in and out, and to be honest, when you're not actually using like um, audio from that specific uh, scene, you haven't got to worry about it too much, but it still is a little joggy, so maybe the 1.4 and the 1.2 might have evolved in that area, obviously for the price increase, and I think they're rather um, a bit more updated and new as well, so that might be a better way to go if you've got a bit more money and you want to do video work. And yeah, so overall, um, the build quality on the lens is perfectly fine. Um, for everyday use. Okay, so kind of sticking with the build quality subject, well, the item itself comes in at 130 grams, so it's quite a lot, nice uh, light lens, so your camera isn't looking completely flat out, it's not like two tons, um, and it's not completely tiny as well. In fact, I want to talk about a competitor to this uh, lens, or in fact, not really a competitor, because this is by the same manufacturer, Canon. Um, they make something called the 40mm Pancake Lens. Now, this retails for around 100, 100 yeah, about 120 pounds, I think. Um, and yeah, this is a more advanced lens. I think it features stepping motor. And to be honest, with it being such a thin profile on the 40mm, you really, when you have it on your camera, it does look a bit doofy, really, a bit stupid. Um, but it's an overall uh, great lens, that lens is, and probably is a bit more evolved than this one. Um, but for the price, if you're looking at a very tight budget, this might be the way to go. Okay, so overall, it's a great lens and does provide a very good picture quality at a very budget price. And uh, yeah, I really do recommend it to anyone, really. And if you want to go ahead and purchase this, I will put um, a recommended um, purchase link in the bottom of this video, straight in the description. So yeah, that was pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you did enjoy it and I'll see you all in the next one.